everyone, welcome to Build Your Own. My name is Gagan and in this video today we'll start with our biochemistry section. So when we think about biochemistry subject, the first thing that comes to mind is nucleic acid. So we are going to study the nucleic acid structure and organization in today's video. Okay, so let's start. At first we'll discuss about what is central dogma. This is just a simple diagram. This central dogma consists of three main steps. This is replication, that is duplication of DNA. DN, the conversion of DNA to RNA, this process is called transcription. This is the second stage of central dogma. And the third stage is the conversion of RNA to protein, which is called translation. Now, if we talk about gene expression, Gene expression is slightly different from central dogma. Central dogma consists of three steps. First is replication, second is transcription and third is translation. But gene expression only has two stages. Transcription plus translation. Just two stages. Replication is not included in gene expression. Okay, so if we compare gene expression with replication, we can see the following points. Okay, the first point of gene expression is that it includes transcription and translation. And DNA replication is simple as duplication of DNA or duplication of chromosome we can say. And second is the location where the gene expression occurs. So transcription occurs in nucleus and translation that is conversion of RNA to protein occurs in cytoplasm and duplication of chromosome we know from the cell cycle that it occurs in the S phase of cell cycle that is interphase S phase this S phase is very important uh, to learn that it that duplication of chromosome occurs in S phase okay so the end result of gene expression will be protein because a translation is the end result of uh, end stage of gene expression so translation means the conversion of rna into protein so there will be formation of protein as a result of gene expression so it will be different in all tissues because all tissues need different proteins so the the gene expression will be different in all tissues different in all tissues but dna replication it has to be same in all tissues because it is just the duplication of chromosomes so it is same in all tissues. Okay, so if we if we uh, see the comparisons between gene expression and DNA replication, these are the differences between those two. But if we see uh, the difference between gene expression and central dogma, we see that gene expression consists of transcription and translation processes, whereas central dogma consists of transcription, translation and DNA replication. So this is the major differences between these two. So the next thing we, we will talk about is nucleotide and nucleoside. What is the difference between nucleotide and nucleoside? Nucleoside is nitrogen base plus sugar. Whereas nucleotide is nitrogen base plus sugar plus phosphate group. Okay, so at first we'll discuss about the sugar as it is common in both nucleoside and nucleotide. The sugar can be two types, ribose or deoxyribose. How, how we distinguish these uh, sugars is, okay, so I'll, I'll make diagrams of ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar and I'll tell you how to distinguish between those two sugars. Okay, so in ribose sugar, there will be two OH groups at two prime, and three prime. This is one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime. And this one is five prime. So there will be presence of OH, two OH groups individually at two prime and three prime carbon. Whereas in deoxyribose, there will be OH group only on the three prime carbon. So this is the difference between ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar. So now if we discuss about the next common thing that nucleoside and nucleotide has, it has nitrogen base. So we'll discuss about nitrogen base next. There are two types of nitrogen bases, purine 
and pyrimidine. Pyrimidines are adenine and guanine. Whereas pyrimidines are cytosine, uracil and thymine. You can remember uh, the purines as pure as gold. And now we'll discuss the structures so that you can distinguish uh, which one is purine and which one is pyrimidine. And you can name the nucleoside or the nucleotide. So if we discuss the purines. Okay, so th this structure is adenine. You can see that it has NH2 group here. So when, when, a purine, when a structure has NH2 group here, you can say that it is adenine. And when it undergoes deamination, when it undergoes a process called deamination, deamination is the removal of NH2 group. So it will form guanine, which is another purine. Okay, so you can uh, differentiate between purine and pyrimidines as Purine has the longer structure, the bigger structure. So you can say that short name, short name, that is purine is a very short name as compared to pyrimidine. Short name, but bigger structure. So when you see two rings, it will be purine. And when you see NH2 group attached to a big structure, it is called adenine. And after it undergoes deamination, that is removal of NH2 group, it will form guanine and this guanine looks like this and now if we discuss about our second nitrogen base which is pyrimidine I'll show you the diagrams and I'll tell you how to distinguish between them pyrimidines are cytosine, uracil and thymine this structure as you can see this is a very small structure and it is a big uh, big word pyrimidine but a small structure as I told you in purine topic purine is a very small letter is a very small word but has a bigger structure and pyrimidine is a long word but has a small structure smaller structure than purine so this structure is called cytosine when this undergoes deamination which is removal of NH2 group it forms uracil but when this structure undergoes methylation Methylation is the addition of CH3 group. It will form thymine. Okay, so let's repeat it again. Pyrimidine is a long word, so it has a short structure. So at first, cytosine has NH2 group. This is the structure. This is how cytosine looks like. And when it undergoes deamination, that is removal of NH2 group, it will form uracil. Uracil looks like this. And when it undergoes methylation, that is addition of CH3 group, it will form thymine. And it is a very important information that uracil is only seen in RNA, only in RNA, and thymine in DNA. While cytosine is common in both RNA and DNA. So in DNA, the structure will be, if, if there are pyrimidines, there will be cytosine and thymine, whereas in RNA, it will be uracil and cytosine. Okay, so if we uh, look at an example now, how to know uh, which one is nucleoside and which one is nucleotide with all this information together. Okay, so now if we look at this, we can say that the phosphate group is absent in here. There is no phosphate group, group attached to this. So it is not a nucleotide. It is therefore a nucleoside. So if we discuss about nucleoside first, we'll, we'll check for which sugar is this. And uh, I told you the, about the sugar, there's a difference between ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar. In ribose sugar, they have two OH groups attached to 2' prime carbon and 3' prime carbon. So it will be a ribose group, ribose sugar we can say. And what do you think, what is this? It is a big structure, so it is for sure a purine. And what, which purine do you think this is? It has NH2 group, so I told you that this purine with NH2 group will be adenine. So if we combine these together, we form adenosine. For, for the naming of this structure, I have a very important information to share. Nucleoside is made up of sugar plus nitrogen base. 
So there is a trick in the naming of nucleoside. If the nu if the nucleoside base is a purine, then we use the suffix or scene. Suffix is what comes at the end of the word and prefix is what comes at the initial part of the word. And purine in, in purine we use the suffix or scene and in pyrimidine we use the suffix as edine. You can remember this by edine. It, it's in the name. And about sugar, if it is RNA, there is no prefix. But if there is DNA, then the prefix used is deoxy. So in this example we studied that uh, this sugar is ribose sugar because of presence of two OH groups on the second prime carbon and third prime carbon uh, and th this structure has NH2 groups so it will be adenine so it then combines to form RNA it has no prefix so there will be no prefix used but this is a purine so the suffix used will be adenosine osine. So this is how we name a nucleoside. Now we'll discuss how we name how we will name a nucleotide. Now if we see that this this structure has a phosphate group, phosphate group, so it will be called a nucleotide. Now at first we'll check which sugar is this, ribose or deoxyribose. It has only one OH group at three prime carbon, so this will be a deoxyribose sugar. Now if we talk about this, this is a bigger structure so it will be a purine. Which purine is this? We, we discussed that when it has NH2 group it is called adenine but when it undergoes deamination that is removal of NH2 group it will form this structure which is called guanine. Okay, so let, let's name the structure. It has DNA, so it will be called deoxy. Which one is this? Guanine. Deoxy. Guanosine. And there is presence of one phosphate group, so it will be deoxy guanosine. Monophosphate. So this is how we name nucleotide and nucleoside. Okay, so this was all about the biochemistry section for today's video. The summary of today's video includes that we studied about a central dogma first, that it has three steps. First is replication, second is transcription, and third is translation. And it differs from gene expression as gene expression has only two stages, transcription and translation. And then we studied about the difference between nucleoside and nucleotide. Nucleoside has nitrogen base plus sugar group. And nucleoside has nitrogen base, sugar and a phosphate group. And we discussed how to name the nucleoside and nucleotide separately. Okay, so this was all for today. We'll meet in the next video with the further information about uh, DNA structure. Thank you all for watching. Uh, keep subscribing and keep motivating.